Kyle? Ready? Three? All right. Cool. Hey, what's up? You're listening to Local Frequencies, your connection to the local music scene, as that you was, probably know. That was different. What? You said, what's up? What's up? Instead of, hey, you're listening to Local Frequencies, you added, what's up? I'm very sorry. Did you I went off, off script. Kyle? Did I throw uh, you off? <laughs> I can't handle this. As you probably know, <laughs> I'm Bree. Oh, I'm Kyle. Hopefully you know that by now because we've been doing this for a long time. Um, today we have Newport Jam with Shame. us and they are from Madison, Wisconsin. Um, are you guys all from Madison originally? No, I'd say we're mostly out of the Dells area. And, uh, you know, we're, we're just getting familiar with Derek. And uh, actually, I'm not positive where Derek's from. Where'd you grow up? I grew up in Oxford, Wisconsin, which Oxford. is kind of by the Dells. Oh, yes, we did talk about that. Yeah, so it's very local to the area. And uh, over the last few years, we've started uh, migrating towards Madison. And, um, but we still have uh, a home base in the Dells and play there a lot during the summer. So. Okay, okay. And uh, we should probably introduce yeah, everybody. Let's go from, like... <laughs> Our left to right. Alright, so we yeah, have Levi. Right. And Done. Levi is actually nephew, right? Yep. The nephew of Kevin Kellogg, who you hear Kevin. on the morning show. Good old Kevin. He saved the day today. The station was locked when we got here, and he came all the way out. With a skeleton key? Yeah, with a skeleton <laughs> key. Um, and then in the middle here, we have Dan. How you doing? <laughs> <laughs> You can, yeah, you can talk in the mic, Dan, it's cool. And then we have Derek. Yep, this is, my name's Derek. And, um, so Levi does guitar, uh, play, I'm sorry. Yeah, I play guitar, and I also uh, play keys, and I'm the lead singer. Okay, and Dan? I play bass guitar. Dan is also the only one without a beard. Yes. <laughs> true, if, you, if you guys didn't see me right is, now. Is there a reason? One. Just to paint the picture. <laughs> <laughs> I, I just can't grow a respectable beard like these guys. Oh, no, it's no competition. <laughs> And then, uh, Derek, what do you do? I play, uh, play drums. Drums, all right. So why don't we just get started? So you guys, um, you all met, like, in the Dells, kind of. How did you guys get together? Because, I mean... Well, Newport Jam's gone through a, a, a lot of uh, phases, and because uh, it's been kind of a, a band being built through, uh, you know, college and different things like that. Um, started out a lot as a... Uh, um, high school friends kind of that had gotten together from Sorry About Your Couch was originally a band we were in when we were playing more <laughs> punk music and uh, we were out of the Dells at that time so a couple of us original members from that just kind of wanted to play some more. Uh, I'd been hanging out with Dan here for a little while. He'd been going to school at MMI in Madison and uh, I lived nearby so we'd hang out and stuff and it, it, it just kind of one thing after another. One showboat show, had a good time, and uh, get asked back for a second, and then you just you kept going. So, um, you know, I think we're seven, eight years later, something like that, and, uh, you know, just getting ready for another summer, basically. So that's you've awesome. been Newport Jam, cycle, huh? you've been Newport Jam for that long? Yeah. Or, oh, that's awesome. Yeah. It's cool to see a group actually really stick together. I've gone through a couple bands. Kyle and I both have. Well, hey, you've been through two of the bands with me, yeah. so don't even start. I feel like it's really hard to find people that are as committed as you are. Well, and that's where there's there's been times with it where we've we've kind of taken on a Newport family approach, and that's where there's been different times where different members have been in. There have been different makeups of what has constituted the band, and so with that and with the songs that we try to bring out, it. It, it works for people to be able to jump in, or we can go to a place and play a coffee house that's the trio or a duo acoustic set, but we could go to a stadium show if we needed to on the back end. So having that kind of versatility also opens up being able to keep the unit together in a way right. and carry on, even if at a point in time somebody else has something else going on in their life. So. Right. So, um, go ahead, Kyle. So why don't you tell the people what Newport Jam is all about? Like, what, do you, what kind of music do you play and all that? Well, I'd say it's kind of a, uh, a funk rock, reggae rock, um, you know, the, it's come up a few times, the, the general concept of uh, the fact we have like jam in our name, and really, I guess for me it was a little more ambiguous where it was like the jamming in your garage concept, more than uh, we've, <laughs> we've sort of just kind of fallen into a little bit of the local jam scene as well, and it's a very welcoming scene, and uh, we found a we found a place of a lot of people who want to do exactly like I was kind of saying, where you can kind of jump in and fill in. You might find a saxophone player who's oh, yeah. about it, or a, a good guitarist who can just jump in with any band. Mm -hmm. Well, if you leave yourself that kind of space in the song, it, it can make that room for people. So, so we're able to kind of blend into different areas. But 
I think really that's where it was, is it was the ambiguity of <laughs> jamming in our garage, and that's where it all came from. So the songs, songs range from that, things we listen to at any given time that are kind of inspiring us at that time, to stuff that we think will work in the sand at Mama's in the Dells. So when people mm -hmm. are dancing and out in the summer, it's like, all right, would this be fun? So It's going to be fun yeah. to play in the Dells in the summer. We've been booking, Kyle and I are a duo, and we've been booking a lot. And the Dells is not a place I have ventured to yet. It's a lot of work. Well, that's, that's <laughs> true. If you keep your stuff fresh, it's, we, you know, there's a great thing about it, which is that we have gone through phases, like one of the years we were playing there where we played like four nights a week for them. We played uh, Wednesday night at, I'd say, Mama's, Thursday night at Showboat, Friday night at Mama's, then Saturday night at Showboat. And the beauty of it was that every single night you could have totally different people. Right, it's such they a large just, turnover in the yeah, Dells, it's you, ridiculous. You would almost, I mean, there's the there's the locals that support, of course, and and you get to know them, and that's some of the fun then is, is tweaking, and they notice the differences of tweaking your set a little bit, and they notice the differences of what you're doing from night to night. Right. But for the general, you know, it's it's a fresh face, fresh crowd every night, right. and you can just have that's fun. That's the thing, so. about the, I think one of the best pieces of advice I've ever gotten while doing this, um, doing local frequencies, is about booking and gigs, is don't saturate an area. Mm -hmm. But with the Dells, I feel like it's so, you, you just it's can't. Exactly. You can't. Like. And, I, and I will align with what you're saying. That's that's a trick, is uh, saturate, not saturating a local circuit. Right. Or a regional circuit. You don't want to play, you know, that, like in yeah. little old town of Boston, you don't want to play four nights a week in a different yeah. bar because yeah. it's, it's all the same people. It's yeah. people that support you and love what you're doing, but at the same time, they're like, yeah, I just heard that set list last night, like, exactly. and you're like, sorry, I can't learn 40 songs in the next eight hours, like, exactly. you know, well, so. I mean, you, a lot of people, you end up reaching out through social media and things like that to help promote and raise yep. awareness, and you don't want to oversaturate social media with, like, the same thing to the same people, reinviting yep. the same people, because it starts to be like, okay, yeah, everyone, everybody's busy, everybody's doing things, and it is... Nothing but respectable. I appreciate when people take time out of their day to come see my show. That's mm. awesome. I I don't expect you to have three nights in your week to be able to like cut <laughs> come ties. Come every <laughs> night for four hours. This is happening. <laughs> I, that would be awesome. But I understand that people have stuff going on. So so yeah, it's it's understanding to keep the spread. But if you can come out, we sometimes do play three times a week. <laughs> <laughs> I was just going to say, Dan, do you have anything to say? <laughs> Derek already said he's not much of a talker, so if you have anything to say, though, feel free to... Chime I'll, in. I'll chime in with my tambourine. <laughs> <laughs> Every, just... <laughs> <laughs> um, oh, here's a really good question we always ask everybody. Um, actually, I'm going to start with Derek, because he hasn't said anything, so grab the mic there. What uh -huh. is your earliest musical memory? Ooh, earliest musical memory. Driving my parents nuts in the kitchen with pots and pans when I was probably four or five. <laughs> I knew I was going to be a drummer from that point on. <laughs> what every parent wishes their kid would be. <laughs> what about you, Dan? Well, myself, uh, I actually originally started playing guitar when I was about 12 or 13 years old. 13 years old. And uh, I used to play in front of my brother's friends all the time. They were a couple years older than me, and they just loved it. And so I just kind of entertained them, and that kind of formed into, you know, playing my own music and just kind of developed with that. Cool. How about you, Levi? Yeah, I was trying to think if I had something earlier, what the timeline was, but I think it's fair to say. I mean, it, it ties to directly together with when people ask the question of what was your first like live concert experience. I think they're together in this one, and for me, it was uh, when my dad, Kevin Kellogg's brother, uh, took me to. I don't want to say it was actually WrestleMania, but it was a WWE event. <laughs> <laughs> and it, it just happened to be that that was the year that Motley Crue was touring with them. Oh, and so geez. they had the pyrotechnics and they had all the stuff and Tommy Loser and I was just like How old were you when you went to that? Oh, I'm probably eight. Okay. You know, I go, I, it's it's all like hazy a anything back you're fired then, up. Yeah, it, it definitely, uh, it, that's one of the first times I can remember seeing something like that where it was on the next, if you will, the next level of something that I wasn't going to see quite, uh, you know, at a local show. So, um, <laughs> that kind of cranked up some intensity, I guess, for the showman, the entertainment. There you go, Kyle. That's what we need. <laughs> Pyrotechnics. 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 Rotating. Burn, burn down okay. rehab next time we play. The rotating <laughs> drum set on yeah. track. Oh, yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah. I mean, so, oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, um, we are at the end of our first uh, segment of the show. When we come back, you're going to get to know a little bit more about Newport Jam. You're yep. listening to Local Frequencies, your connection to the local music scene. 
Hey, we're back and you're listening to Local Frequencies, your connection to the local music scene. We have Newport Jam with us here. Yep. 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 They're here. They're Kyle. definitely sitting right in front of us. You know, people, microphone. Give, people give me crap because I talk so much, but Kyle just kind of... Well, what? I, say sometimes Kyle. Sometimes I have things to say. Well, then say them. Don't worry, Kyle, me either. <laughs> All right, so, so continuing on from last segment, we talked about your earliest musical memory. So I don't know if this would be related, like uh, directly related, like it would be the Get thing to the I'm point, looking Kyle. I'm trying. <laughs> Let me say, what, what would be your most influential musical memory? What's a good one? I'm doubling down on WrestleMania. <laughs> 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 oh, it's hard uh, to break loose of that one. I don't oh. Yeah. All right, what about you, Dan? Dan? What do you got? Well, for me, uh, you know, I'd say probably going to actual concerts with my older brother. Uh, you know, we went to quite a few of myself, and that kind of inspired me to, you know, do it myself. And since I was already kind of playing music, that really uh, jump-started me into that. So I'd awesome. definitely say, you know, sharing that experience with him. I'd say, okay. That, that almost kind of segues. It reminded me when you were telling uh, on the last segment as well. I think that was the one of the next steps. Uh, I was hitting a point just after high school, and I was like, you know, I want to go back at being uh, a lead singer. I want to do some things because we had done the uh, the punk band before, but uh, we were starting something else. And I just remember my brother kind of put me in a similar where he he was sort of tested me, and he was like, well, if you really want to do this, well, then sing, sort of thing, like just sing. The, him and his friends were over, and they're like, this is what you're. And so doing that, like just being like, okay, I'm going to stand here in acapella, just give you something for a while, and, and, and hopefully something that's pleasing, I guess, mm -hmm. <laughs> but uh, being on the spot. And so that moment, though, stuck with me, and I remembered then that, like, have the confidence to do it, take the chance. And we were talking about this recently in Vegas, of all places, uh, like two weeks ago, where I, I think it really came to, came to me that, I will always be more upset at the chances I don't take than the ones I take and fail. And I, I've heard it before, but until I had experienced a couple of situations like that, it really sank in and altered the way I was moving forward. And so I think that moment sort of reflects a layer of that, of what I learned. So. Yeah, definitely. Yep. Derek? Awesome. Yeah, um, so I'm kind of interesting. I didn't have uh, really a musical growing up. My family was, um, was a religious family, and my musical experiences and taste reflected that until I hit high school. <laughs> and around the time that Levi was in a band called Sorry About Your Couch, I was in a band called High School Heroes uh, from Westfield, Wisconsin, just a local high school band. I got most of my experience um, playing in a rock band from that band. So yeah. that was definitely a very memorable experience for me. I enjoyed it. Okay, so I can't take it anymore. You, I know you know me. I used to be at your house all the time. I was best friends with Dana. <laughs> oh my gosh, you guys, if you want to see his face, we upload these videos to our YouTube channel to we videotape the interview. He, um, when I met him out when they got here, I shook everybody's hand, <laughs> and I'm dying right now, and I shook his hand and he's like, and I'm like, hi, Brie, and he's like, Derek, nice to meet you, and I'm like, yeah, yep, nice to meet you too, <laughs> and he looked at me so weird though, <laughs> and I'm like, I know he knows me, <laughs> so when he stepped out of the room, I told the other guys, I was like, so nobody say anything, but I know Derek from years ago, I was best friends with his sister, like, don't say a thing, and I just couldn't do it anymore, yeah, he's, that sounds about right, that sounds like he's been looking at me so weird for the past 20 minutes, and it's just, oh, I'm so sorry, it's killing me, so I, Fantastic. Well, it's <laughs> nice to re meet you. It's probably like met in another life. Um, but yeah, you know what? People always tell you, okay, Levi, do people, when they find out you sing, do they go, okay, sing something for me? No, I would be. That is not really? as common. Oh um, my gosh, maybe it's like I bartend and people find out I sing and they're like, sing something for me. I'm like, what? No. Oh, yeah, no. <laughs> I guess because what it would be like, because I could definitely see that in the same way where people say like, if, oh, I'm a comedian. All right, tell me a joke. Yeah. I just don't. I don't get it the same way. I, I guess to be fair, maybe people feel like they only got that they only get one, and the first thing they're gonna go is, is this real? And they grab my beard. And <laughs> I can tell you, I, I liked your beard when you got here. Way more than I could ask if I can sing. Uh, they just. It's, uh, is it real? <laughs> yes. yes. <laughs> and, uh, it's out of hand, for sure. But, uh, I, I mean, one lady in particular, we, it was the middle of the day, and well, she was having fun. We were at the beach, and she's two-handed. She's pulling the beer? Oh, man. Impressive people's uh, goal. <laughs> the strength, too. You know, the strength, the strength yeah, in people. Too. You know, when we're playing at the, at the bars there, you know, people get a little bit rowdy there, and then all oh, of a yeah. sudden it separate comes up there, and 
get a big old pull on Levi's beard, and he's like, oh, I see that from just from the stage, and I'm like, oh my god. <laughs> <laughs> it's not, not a lucky, lucky charm. <laughs> <laughs> Andrew left a little bit lucky beard. No. Oh, man. <laughs> Kyle? Kyle. Right. I have questions sometimes. <laughs> yep. Um, you guys are goofy. <laughs> <laughs> you have no idea. Well, you might, because you're boys. I didn't grow up with brothers. I grew up with, I have four little sisters. Oh, okay. So, working with Kyle, good old Kyle, right has, like been, has been an Seems experience, fun, yeah. let me tell you. <laughs> I came into the house one time, and there's, like, smoke, and I hear stories about him blowing things up in the house, and, um... His mom, Eva, this is his mom, Eva, this, she's here with us today because they're um, on their way out really quick after we're done, but the stories I hear, like, did you guys blow things up as children? Like, is it a boy thing? Like, did you, were you I just destructive? Know. Like, I, mean, I feel like I lit things on fire. I had a BB gun. So, yeah, I didn't work Kyle's not allowed to have any gun. sort of thing that shoots projectiles. <laughs> like, Combustion <laughs> is an interesting thing. Oh, I believe yeah. it is, yes. what it is, and I... I I'm better now. Some of the I know. Things, I, know. I, I, I'm I don't feel now. like I still burn this. <laughs> His mom's laughing That's hysterically. Not fair. That's not true. <laughs> right. Oh. I was going to. Okay. Oh, hey. But anyway. Imagine you're all on a boat. You're all having a great time, right? You're on the ocean. Oh, you're all crap. You crash. Your, your boat's dead. You know, it's gone. I'm really glad you're putting <laughs> yeah. a scenario to yeah. this question now. Yeah. All right. And now you're on an island. All right. Yep. And there happens to be just a record player on the island <laughs> oh, okay. with a single just outlet. A record player. And, and you, you, you just happened, you just had the foresight to bring a record on the boat with you, and it survived. What record would it be? Now it's a vinyl, so my answer would be different than if you told me just any any album of all time, but the only album that I would bring would be Sgt. Pepper's from the Beatles. Oh, yep. It's respectable. It's respectable. Dan? Well, now, since it's an album, that changes things. I probably would have said a 97 Tweezer, Levi. <laughs> <laughs> but I guess Ooh. since it's an album, uh, let's see here. See, I was not an album collector myself. I was more of this on the CD side, personally. So, hmm. Anything works. Anything works. Levi, what, what's your album? I, you know, it's the thing with this question is that I think it's the island that ends up, uh, it's going to affect my decision still at that's the end of the day. That's and I think true. that's where I fell into the, the category of like, uh, you know, honestly, like even a bright side of life or something okay. revolution uh, coming that way. Jack I mean, those guys, uh, something revolution or something in that department would be very fitting to having a positive outlook going forward, being the only man left on an island. <laughs> and completely fitting the theme of like going around and finding some coconuts to live so yeah, yeah. um yeah so i think that that's kind of where i would fall well if you have that album then i'd probably grab a, a good sublime album probably their self-titled one just because that one I, I could probably listen to all day and with those albums in mind you're probably a decent mix i like that we found each other in this, album too. <laughs> this was a good record you have to, you have to take turns luckily we all found each other and we all saved an album different albums <laughs> All right, well, we have to take another break, but when we come back, um, Newport Jam is going to play an original for us, and I, what's the name of your original, guys? Uh, we're going to play uh, No Time Like the Present. All right, so awesome. when we come back, you're going get, to get to listen to No get Time to. Like the Present. You're listening to Local Works. Frequencies, your connection to the local music scene. Hey, we're back, and you're listening to Local Frequencies, your connection to the local music scene. We have Newport Jam here with us, and they are going to play their original No Time Like the Present. Um... And we'll talk a little bit about the original when you guys are all done. Sound good? Sounds good. Thank you. All right. Good. So whenever you guys are ready.
<laughs> nice job, you guys. That was great. That was awesome. Yeah. You Thank guys you. can go ahead and get all resituated again. Whoa. I was trying to find the right balance. So Taking like, the head bend off. <laughs> Yeah. So that was, that was really good. No time like the present. That was yeah. very different from other stuff yeah, we had on the was, show, but I liked yeah. it a lot. It was, it was really good. Yeah. yeah. That, that guitar sounds awesome. Thank you. It does sound really what, good. What, what is it? It's a Simon and Patrick. It's a Canadian guitar that I, I bought it as a cutaway electric to get when I was a little bit younger, and uh, the electronics aren't working in it anymore. But I recently had it redressed and reset so I could use it for other things. Yeah. But because between the the general tone that I get from being a lighter body, but also um, the general uh, the wood finish on it, just the back it's, of it's beautiful. So now, now this is actually a rare treat because normally you, you hardly ever play this guitar. Uh, we he usually has a, a seventy nine gilt. Is that correct? Yeah. Uh -huh. Okay. Usually yeah, play, but. Yep, but it, uh, it's just under minor maintenance right now, so we're trying out. The, <laughs> <laughs> this one had been under minor maintenance before, so yeah. Switch. It's a slight cycle. Oh, that, was, that but, sounds awesome. Thank you. Thank you. So what, um, what, been, what went into writing that song? Uh, I mean, that one, it, it's, a, it's a mix of an ode to, to Mama's Garage, a place that we've just... Uh, I, I think actually when it comes down to it, the outside stage at Mama's Garage, we've played the most. Uh, Newport Jam has been on that stage more than anyone. And uh, it's ingrained itself as part of us as well, um, just the culture of mamas and having fun in the dolls. And so uh, I, wanted to, I wanted to write something that uh, I guess I could speak to that, as well as speak to some of the general feeling that I guess I, I got uh, from growing up in the dolls. And that was uh, uh, wanting for more at the same time. They, they teach you a lot of uh, useful concepts like uh, work hard, play hard sort of the situation, but at the same time, um, I feel like the, the Dallas also shows that there's so much going on in the world. Because of the amount of people that come to town, because of all those faces every night and all those mm -hmm. different people, if you stop and talk to them, you know, you just start hearing about a lot of other things that it's really easy to forget about when you're so stuck on work hard, play hard, and the Dallas can burn you out working hard. So. <laughs> <laughs> that's true. Yeah, that's, that's true, for yeah. sure. But... So yeah, so I think that was a lot of it, and it, it kind of was a, a thing to help try to pull myself up. I can get I can get kind of hermit style in the winter, and uh, and I think we all do. Yeah, I and, hate and honestly, the Dells only reaffirm that sort of thing. You just you <laughs> enjoy it, and then the Dells kind of shuts down yep, itself in the winter. And, so so a lot of it was sort of pulling myself out of that, and just like we're going for more. No time like the present. Where I do it now. So. What would awesome. you say, um, I always like to ask this question, um, what would you say is your guys' biggest, um, like, support? Like, who supports you in your music music endeavors? I would almost uh, reflect right back to Showboat and Mamas in the first sense when I say, like, a business and someone who's given us a platform that stood behind us since our literal first show to, um, to today. Um, so... We will obviously stand and say our, our, you know, our families have been there for us and bought the, you know, for a lot of times either bought the first guitar or did the first, <laughs> gave the first push in a lot of ways. And, and those stories we were telling about ranging from WrestleMania to uh, good older brothers and all these different things have been there. Um, but we know that there's been incredible support from our hometown, from the Dells, and, uh, and making sure that we had a place every summer to to express ourselves and see and test and, and go back and forth and be that laboratory of, of sounds. Mm -hmm. So <laughs> just kind of see what happens. Fans and people who happen to be there and uh, appreciated us and stayed there the night and came back, you know, the following night if yeah. you were there. That's how the look, I mean, that's For sure. it's one of those places. That's how the locals of that place become. It becomes another little family and everyone sticks together and helps out and makes sure that, you know, everyone's taken care of and you get, you get the work done you need to. So. Yeah. And I think people, um, we always give credit, you know, to like our, you know, our families are always really important, um, most of the time. <laughs> you know, sometimes, you know, your parents probably didn't want you to go be a musician because, you know, a lot yeah, of, a totally. lot of parents That's don't see it as a, yeah. as in, in quotations, a real job. Yeah. Um, but I think fans are okay. really important because they really, you know, they're the ones that buy your CDs and come yeah. to your shows and, you know, the more people you have at your shows, the more likely the bar is to hire you again and, mm -hmm. you know, all that good stuff. So definitely... Out to the fans out there, do you guys have like a like a SoundCloud or anything like that? We do have a SoundCloud. We also, I mean, I, we put it <laughs> just on the back of our business cards, and we're we're on the internet. 
Yeah, right. <laughs> just yeah. go on the internet and uh, ask Jeeves or whoever's the new person you ask. ask oh my gosh, ask Jeeves. Uh, <laughs> wow, to give me and back here. And they'll find you. They'll find us. Um, they'll find, but yeah, so Newport out. Jam is on Facebook. They yeah, have a Facebook, Facebook page. We also, find them, like them. Um, share them definitely we also wanted to mention and, and uh, we're because we continue to host uh, the Tootaloo Music Festival as well and the Tootaloo Music Festival is located I guess kind of in, in that in between of the Lake Delton Baraboo kind of in between before the casino okay. um, at the at the Wisconsin Opry the Big Red Barn so we host our music festival there and uh, this will be the second year at that location third and year all when is the festival June 9th 10th and 11th okay so we uh, just want to make sure that everyone was uh, Aware that that was going down locally, and it involves a ton of uh, local and regional acts. We got Minneapolis bands coming. We have some uh, Chicago area bands coming, and then a lot of Wisconsinites. That's so. awesome. See, and like where we've lived in Boston and the area our whole lives, and I've I haven't heard. I haven't, I haven't, heard I haven't festival, lived in Boston so. in a little bit, but there was a window. I, I'm gonna <laughs> stop out of my dad's. But it's just, I'm saying like it's really crazy. Home, so. It's crazy how um how much there is in oh, our yeah. area. Like you know, people feel like they have to go to bigger cities for the best stuff out there and you, you don't like just well, that's why we were thrilled take a step outside you your door for a second exactly. and look around yeah. you stop and look and quit just you know 100 percent. take away the tunnel and look what's there because there's so much stuff here it's and that's what, i mean honestly including what you guys are doing here in your studio this was a, a, a great treat so we had no idea how big our radio show was gonna get i mean yeah we have people come up and you know talk to us about it all the time and um People like hear Kyle or I talk, mm -hmm. and they're like, "Wow, why do you sound so familiar?" And they're like, <laughs> oh, you're on the radio. <laughs> right, I'd like to interject. It yes. actually says we're on the internet. <laughs> on the <laughs> business, <laughs> business card. We'll take a picture. Smart so we'll live. Smart live. <laughs> but we are actually at the end of our show. So thank you, Levi, Dan, and Derek for coming um, from Madison to be on yeah, the show awesome. today. Thank be you. sure thank to check much. out their music festival. The Toodaloo Music Festival. Toodaloo, Toodaloo Music, Music Festival. Festival. It's right outside the Dells, correct? Yeah. So check it out. It's not that far, people. I know y'all drive farther Just than go. that. So <laughs> go it. check it out. It's June 9th. June 9th, Just 10th, and 11th. 9th, 10th, and it's $10 a day. So it's not. Well, it's there you go. Yeah, there you go. Not bad at all. Um, do they buy tickets at the gate? or you can buy tickets at the gate or in advance. We have uh, Toodaloo, I'm sorry, NewportJamProductions.com is where That's we That's also are. on Facebook. They're on the internet. Yeah. We're We're on the internet. internet. <laughs> you will find all that stuff. Tickets are available and uh, <laughs> we'll get you all set up. Camping across the street is available. It's next to the Super, or I'm sorry, the Motel 6 as well. So there's places to stay and uh, there be a ton of vendors and local food and things right. like that. Cool. Is there anything awesome. else you guys wanted to say before we go off the air? Just thank you once again. That's yeah, very nice. Yeah, thank you very much for having us. Thank you. Um, for and up. Kyle and I wanted to let you guys know that Kyle and Bree will be at Rehab Bar and Grill on the third of April oh, from yeah. be there. four to eight. I think it's from four to eight. Why Rehab Bar and Grill from out. four to eight. And then the next, and then that Saturday, April 9th, we'll be at Hillsborough Brewing Company be there from too. eight to eleven. So come and just go. Check us out. Right. Remember, support your local musicians, all of us. All right, so I think that's just, it. Just go. Just, Kyle says just go, <laughs> man. Just go. All right, thanks, you guys, for listening. Thank you, Newport Jam, for coming. Yeah, yeah. yeah and, uh, it was awesome. I think that's it. That's uh, it. Oh, next week oh, we next have week. Lo Marie and her sister. Ooh, I believe it's Valerie, but don't quote me. But don't quote me. Um, is going to be on the show next week from Madison also. So thank you guys for listening. You're listening to Local Frequencies, your connection to the local music scene.